Well, Mr. Mon, I could put those away for you if you want to leave. No, that's all right, Miss Parks. I have nothing to do after work. Thank you, Mr. Mon. Have a good night. You too. I was passing by. I was. Uh, is there anyone here? We're all alone. You're as white as a sheet, you funny man. What's come over you? I fix you a toddy. Scotch and soda be all right? But say, you don't drink, do you? Scotch and soda will be fine. Take off those gloves. I always wear them in the house. Come over here, you odd little man. Well, this is perfectly marvelous. You, with a drink and a cigarette. I always drink and smoke. Here's the old windbag fit while in. Hmm? Really, Mr. Martin? You're insulting your employer. Ah, I'm preparing a bomb which will blow the old goat higher than hell. Are, are, are you taking dope or something? Heroin. I'll be coked to the gills and I bump the old buzzard uh, off. Really, Mr. Martin? That'll be all of that. You must go at once. about this. Really? I'm in the captain's seat now. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Martin and Mr. Fetweiler would like to see you. Yeah, of course. Martin, you've been with us now more than 20 years. Uh, 22, sir. And in all that time, your work and your manner have been exemplary. I trust so, sir. I've understood that uh, you've never had a drink or smoke. That is correct, sir. Would you describe to me what you did yesterday after you left the office? Uh, certainly, sir. I walked home. I went to the Shrouds for dinner. I walked home again. I was in bed early. I read a magazine. I was asleep before 11. Barrows. Mrs. Barrows has worked hard, Martin. Very hard. And it grieves me to report that she's suffered a severe breakdown. I'm sorry. It has taken the form of a persecution complex accompanied by distressing hallucinations. I'm very sorry, sir. Mrs. Barrows is under the delusion that you visited her last evening and behaved yourself in an unseemly manner. It is the nature of these psychological diseases to fix upon the least likely and most innocent party as the object of persecution. These matters are not for the lay mind to grasp, Martin. I've been on the phone with my psychiatrist, Dr. Fitch, while he would know, not make any commitments to me, he made enough generalizations to substantiate my suspicions. I suggested to Mrs. Barrows after she completed her story that she visit Dr. Fitch. She flew into a rage and demanded I call you on the carpet. You may not know this, Martin, but Mrs. Barrows planned a reorganization of your department. No, I did not know that, sir. Yes, I think this is what brought you to her mind, but here again, this is a phenomenon for Dr. Fitch and not for us. I'm afraid Mrs. Barrow's usefulness here is at an end. I am dreadfully sorry, sir. Is this one right tonight? You can't get away with it. You smoke and drink in my apartment, you know it. You call Mr. Fitch while I'm on the windbag, you're going to blow him up and you'll come to the guild on your heroin. You weren't such a drab, ordinary little man. I think you played sticking out your tongue, saying you were sitting in that bed because you believe you thought nobly when I said it. Oh, it's really too perfect. Can't you see how he tricked us your Can't you see it? Look, Jay? Ow! Get your little wiggle! You made me see the camera! Thank you. Martin, I regret that this has happened. I shall ask you to dismiss it from your mind. Yes, sir. I will. Miss Pard, can you give me Mrs. Barrow's employee file, please? Yeah. Are you there? 